In other words, if this commission is with you, you would like us to recommend you for appointment, notwithstanding that you have acted for six terms and you only have one reported judgment, and other candidates have far more than that. Yes. Secondly, notwithstanding that you have not finalized a single criminal trial. And thirdly, notwithstanding the obvious delays which have been highlighted in terms of you handing down your judgments. Notwithstanding your experience as an advocate for 25 years, you still delay in handing down the judgments. And I can tell you from my experience as a judge president, candidates who delay in handing down judgments when they are still acting only become worse after the permanent appointment. So if it takes you six months to produce a judgment, the moment you are appointed, it will take you six years. So notwithstanding all of that, we must recommend you for appointment. Please. May I start off by confirming that you have acted all together for a period of six months in my division. On each of those occasions, I invited you to act. Yes, I can also confirm that I sat with you in a criminal matter many years ago as an assessor. I think that's about 20 years or so when yes. we met. Right. Now, the first question I would like to ask you is this. In the period of about six terms during which you have acted, yes. how many judgments were in fact reported? I'm not talking about the reportable judgments. I'm talking about judgments that have in fact been delivered by you, which have in fact been reported. I, I uh, thank you, JP. So as far as I c could see before today, it's only the one judgment dealing with the, um, the police matter, the, the Hala Hala matter. Right, so it's one judgment. Yes. Thank you very much. I, I do just want to point out, JP, if I may, um, I, uh, in, during last uh, year in 2021, as you would know, most of, of I did a lot of, of third division work, and um, this year, this term and last term, I mostly um, sat with my criminal matters. Um, so I wasn't allocated civil work um, unless, of course, something happened and I was a, a, and advised you that I was available. But I've been part of your, the backlog program for the criminal uh, trials, and I have done my best in that division. Obviously, you don't write reportable judgments there, but in order to get that matters dealt with. Thank you. Let's talk about crime. How many criminal trials have you, in fact, finished? I have, I'm still busy with the human trafficking trial, and I have um, also started a, a, another one uh, last week on the criminal backlog role. So I, I, since I've been acting, I've not finished a criminal trial. Not finished. Thank you very much. I, I have, however, um, dealt with quite a few few uh, bail appeals. I've dealt with um, many uh, uh, 304 reviews with other judges, where uh, even with you, I think, um, where um, I've gone through the process of the review from the magistrate court to the high court. Um, and all the difficulties that's uh, with delays and so forth in order to get that going. No, I accept that. Of course, the skills are different. When yes, we talk no, about the different. trial, it's not like reviews. The skills are totally different. Yes. Thank you very much. What's your understanding of the word transformation, Mr. David? What does transformation mean to you? I always think these questions are so difficult to answer. But for me, transformation means that in a country such as ours, we need to, and I think it's in the, I mean, that's the aim of the Constitution, we need to address previous discrimination in, which resulted in imbalances in people of color, women not being in, getting the opportunities and being in positions where they should be. And, and for me, that is transformation, to get to a situation where everyone have equal opportunities, where everyone, regardless 
of their gender or colour can be, and that's the transformation process to get to that point. Uh, I think we are still in the transformation process and, and I'm very glad to see that so many more women and, and uh, uh, previously disadvantaged individuals get the opportunity to, um, to sit as judges or magistrates or uh, positions of importance. I think it sends a very important message also to, to the community at large. You know, JP, when I, when I started at the bar 25 years ago, when I applied to become an advocate, we were the biggest group of women who ever applied to become advocates. We were 18 women and that got admitted, who passed the bar exam. And within four years, only four of us were left at the bar. And a year later, only two of us um, were, still, were still left at the bar. And today, it's still the same two women, myself and another female advocate at the bar. Right. Is that your complete answer to transformation? What it means? There is a second level of transformation, which is the mind and the mindset. Yes. That's why yes. you have certain values enshrined in our constitution. Definitely. What do you say to the second level of transformation? Of course, Chief Justice, there must be a change in the mindset of people and, uh, and the way people are dealing with each other. I, I, I don't know how to take it any further than that, but the, the transformation needs to, to get us to a point where we are all equal and where everyone has the same opportunities eventually, and that's why we need transformation. Well, I think it's fair to ask you this follow-up question. There were degrees of oppression in South Africa in the days of apartheid, with whites having more privileges, followed by Indians, colors, and the Africans were right at the bottom of the, of the human race. Now, what would transformation mean in those circumstances, where, for example, there is a white woman who was privileged, and that white woman is up against an African woman or an Indian woman or a colored woman. What do you understand transformation to mean in those circumstances? Yes, um, uh, Judge President, I, I hear what you're saying, and I say that I believe that in those circumstances, and, and I assume uh, we're dealing with, with my particular position as well, that a, a black female uh, candidate who's um, qualified and um, the correct person to be appointed in, in the position should, in terms of pro transformation, probably have a better opportunity than me. I do, however, think that that's not the only thing that counts. I think that the, you must also look at the demographics um, yes, I, I, am, I am a white female, but yes, I, I have also struggled to get where I am today, and I think one must also look at the bench as it is in the Western Cape. Uh, definitely as a result of your efforts, I would say by giving a lot of uh, uh, women the opportunity to act in the High Court, we see that in the High Court there's, of the Western Cape, there's quite a few female judges, uh, and, and obviously with later appointments, black judges and, 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 and women of colour. So I, I hear your question, um, but I think one must look at demographics as well. And in, in the Western Cape specifically, there's only three white female judges. The one is retiring, Judge Stain is retiring in, in December. and. Um, we, the other, then there's two other judges, and one of the other judges often also act in the, the Labour Appeal Court. Not that, um, the point being, I don't think that must be the only criteria. Thank you. Uh, I have one last more question, Deputy Chief Justice. Yes, go ahead, I would like you, there, are, there is one position, Ms. Devet, in the Western Cape. And there are four candidates, all of them are known to me, and all of you are invited by me to act. 
I would like to give you an opportunity to market yourself. Why should we appoint you and not the other three candidates? Thank you, Jackie. I, I thought about that question, and it's a difficult question. And my answer why I, I think I should be appointed is I, through my practice and also through my experience as a mediator, I think that I have something that the other candidates do not have. I have, I have worked for 25 years as an advocate in the High Court in, in matters that's very highly conflictual, a lot of family law and labor matters, which, and, and through my mediation skills, I have been able to, to deal with that, be comfortable with that, assist people to, to approach litigation, maybe in a less um, adversarial manner, um, which I believe is the move going forward. I have also, and I'm, I'm very proud of that, with the allocation of the, um, the Scalabrini trust matter against the, the Minister of Home Affairs, um, you would have seen that that's one of the matters that, that is part heard. It is part heard because I am case managing that matter in terms of Rule 37, with, with your blessing, um, and, and it's worked, uh, it's really a success story in the sense that the Minister of um, the, uh, Home Affairs, in terms of a SEA order, had to reopen the, the Cape Town Refugee Centre already in 2018. Um, the matter came before me um, for the appointment of the Special Master and for to find the, the Department of Home Affairs or the Minister in in contempt of court. After hearing argument, I did give an order saying that, that there's a breach of the SEA's order, but in line with the, the move towards case management and, and resolving matters in order to, um, to get an, a positive outcome, I suggested case management to the parties and uh, who took, immediately took me up on the offer. And we have since then by way of monthly case management meetings, they would submit a report. We, uh, we agreed on a very detailed order of how it will happen because it doesn't need help. We meet every month and we don't know what to discuss. So we have monthly meetings and the, the refugee center will probably be reopened in November this year. We, we've gone for inspections and it's resulted, I believe, in, in, in a huge cost saving um, exercise. It has resulted in all role players working together in order to reopen the refugee center, which will have the result of there being a more efficient system. People who, are, who qualify will, will get their status. People who do not qualify or meet the requirements, they will be uh, uh, deported without all the delays that we see now. So. I think, to answer your question, I, my case management skills, my mediation skills, um, my years of experience at the bar in all kinds of matters, I think that, that in, in, in that, those circumstances, I am the, the, the best candidate for, for this position. In other words, if this commission is with you, you would like us to recommend you for appointment, notwithstanding that you have acted for six terms and you only have one reported judgment, and other candidates have far more than that. Yes. Secondly, notwithstanding that you have not finalized a single criminal trial. And thirdly, notwithstanding the obvious delays which have been highlighted in terms of you handing down your judgments. Notwithstanding your experience as an advocate for 25 years, you still delay in handing down the judgments. And I can tell you from my experience as a judge president, candidates who delay in handing down judgments when they are still acting only become worse after the permanent appointment. So if it takes you six months to produce a judgment, the moment you are appointed, it will take you six years.